Hey, everybody. Welcome to my typical Wednesday. Will you give me a reading YouTube live? I have a wonderful a guest this week. I have the illustrious, the wonderful, the beautiful, the dazzling Nancy Hendrickson. That's me. Thank that you. Her. Thank you. And, <laughs> and we are going to talk about her incredible book, Ancestral Grimoire. Now, if you have Ancestral Tarot, you have to get this book. You have to get this book. This book is just such a great addition to the foundation that Ancestral Tarot, or you, I don't know, Nancy, you can probably do it either way where Ancestral yeah. Grimoire is your first one and then you go over there. We well, you know, can do Ancestral Tarot to do a lot of family ancestral work with family patterns, good or bad. And Ancestral Grimoire is a great complement but you can also use it as a standalone because we're talking about magical ancestors and finding where you fit, what is your most potent form of magic? Mm. So we're, we're, we're working with kind of the beloved dead in both cases. It's just a little bit different focus. Now, I remember uh, last uh, May at the Tide Conference, you and Carrie Paris blew it out of the park with the last minute, wasn't it a mashup of three separate yeah. workshops into one mega cool workshop? It was. It, it was, uh, you know, it, it's simply because Carrie got stuck somewhere in an airport and couldn't get to Dallas. But you know, that worked out really well. But I have seen you since then because I saw you at Omega in July. That's right. And then we got to hang out at Omega right quick. Did you, um, if memory serves me, is the um, the activity that you shared at Omega, was that one of the ones that I've seen in the book or, or similar, yeah. kind of similar-ish? No. No? I thought there was something here about the Lenormand piece. And I was like, oh, that was that the one she did? Oh, I'll have to look more deeply. No, it, it, it wasn't. I pulled that one. You know, I love flying by the seat of my pants. So <laughs> I flew by the seat of my pants. Yeah, I did a lot of flying by the seat of my pants at Omega. <laughs> I think everybody did at Omega just because of the, the very strange circumstance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so this is... This is the second book of like the tarot divination series, but you have a history of writing other books prior to that are more are also ancestry focused, right? Well, you know, yes, genealogy, primarily online genealogy, because I've been doing online since don't tell anybody 1986. <sighs> and back in those days, it was uh, it was scant. I'll say that. Uh, but yes, I've always specialized in finding things online because I'm a really good researcher. So it's, it's a good fit for me. I have a question. Like, I know that, you know, well, I want to go back to Tide because you and Carrie, the way you guys layered <laughs> Lenormand and then charm casting and then the casting like spreadsheet kind of to have us talk to our ancestors was incredibly powerful. Yes, um, I And then you gave each of us like a, a, a handful of charms and then a handful of cards. And just with like five charms and five cards, it was right. incredible the messages that came through. At least it was for me. And I think it was. All, everyone else there was similarly touched. I think so too, because you know, we talked about different ways that you can suffer through certain family things. And some of it's minimal, some of it's maximal. And some people who attended Tide and that particular presentation, they, they were across, they experienced all the bad stuff. And so getting those cards, and that was from the Ofrenda Oracle, which by the way, I'm going to be having extra copies at StarCon in January. Ooh, did you hear that, guys? Yeah, so be there. Um, because it's specifically made for working with the beloved dead. And then put the charms on top of it. And I know you like to do layers in your mm -hmm. readings. And that lends itself to that layered approach, which I like, too. I love, too. I think that in general, that's becoming more and more popular. And I, I think like Jamie Sawyer was really good at kind of kicking that off when you'd watch her do all these layered techniques yeah. on her like morning lives on Instagram. And but I have to say, look, you guys, you guys made me buy all of the mega charm kit 
of Carrie's. No, that was Carrie. That was <laughs> And but um, you also have charm casting as like a subtopic in Ancestral Grimoire, right? I do. I Along do. with pendulums and Lenore, like you've got a little bit of everything in there. You do because you know they they. The, the publisher, because, you know, you have a book coming out in November, I think. November 8th, coincidentally, Election Day. <laughs> okay. And uh, you know that you you do a, a proposal and you, you have a table of contents, but, you know, a publisher always has a final say and, you know, pull this chapter, put this chapter in. So um, they wanted more than tarot, which is great because I do more than tarot. Mm -hmm. And I use pendulums probably every day mm -hmm. and writing the book. When I was writing the book, I used the pendulum every day. So the more you use it, the better that open channel becomes. And it, it is amazing. It's a great adjunct to tarot. So, so am I hearing that ancestral grimoire was shaped in part by an ancestor that you've been working with yourself? One of your yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same ancestor as with Ancestral Tarot, but now that little group of ancestors have said, we've told you all we need to tell you now, so we're going to leave for a while. And as I, as I say, I'm in this ancestral void just because I, they're always there, but I haven't asked for help for a project yet. So uh, they're off doing whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. in ancestral land <laughs> yeah that's great um i really love so i want to talk about the book a little bit like how long did this take you from start to finish did, was it one of those ones that just flowed and came through very quickly or did you need to take your time you know jenna it's a really interesting question because the actual writing of the book was three months but everything that came into the book was my lifetime so I, I couldn't have started from scratch and written the three months. I, I needed all those years of experience working with tarot, pendulums, ancestors, etc. cetera. Lenormand is a newer tool to me. Uh, I'm less, less accomplished at it. I, I'll be kind and say that. Um, I'm beginning to get it a little bit more. Uh, but I like using different tools. I think part of it is because I like to analyze oh, is this one going to ag agree with that one? I want to see if things are in sync with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how, how things agree in sync with one another. So if is I ask it? my cards, if my, if my cards say absolutely yes and my pendulum says absolutely no, <laughs> problematic for me. You got two ancestors like arguing over the situation above your head. <laughs> well, you know, just I think kidding. sometimes that does. No, I think sometimes that does happen because just because they are the beloved dead does not mean they are without characteristics, personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mm -hmm. certainly found that working with ancestral tarot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I I want to I also want to share a little bit more give people some juicy morsels to think okay. about so they get excited about offering it. Um, I really love in the book that you you included a year of ancestors, and you know it's kind of a super secret magical like magical how to primer that you've couched okay. in the book. You know, like you don't like lead with that, but someone who goes through all of those activities by the end of the year have a pretty good foundation in all kinds of magical workings, which I, I love. And what I also like is that you and I are very similar in that we love science and magic and we try to see where all the intersectional yeah. parts of both are, That's that true. one doesn't throw the other off, that they enhance each other. So yeah. I love that as well. Good, me too. And, and you know, if you don't have to take a whole year some people with ancestral tarot did take a whole year, but it is the second half of the book is January through December. But I also have a section if people would rather do it by Sabbaths instead, mm -hmm. of months, which which I like doing. But the reason I wanted to do that is I wanted to find a different type of magic for every month. 
so that you could find the ancestor and the type of magic that really was a great match with you. Mm -hmm. And it may be something you didn't even think about. So um, yeah, you, know, you may not have thought about water magic in any form or fire magic. I mean, or, you know, I love working with spirits of the land. Land, mm -hmm. I loved doing the land magic uh, chapter just because it's something that I do often is I love walking with my pendulum in my neighborhood and I can find where the energetic spots are. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very interesting, Jenna, because I've discovered that the energy spots is where I will often also find cats. <laughs> Does that surprise you? No. No. <laughs> cats are so drawn to energy. I, oh. I've, I've had cats most of my life until recent years. And maybe dogs are the same. I just don't have enough dog experience. <laughs> you know if that's true. Dog people chime in. <laughs> people totally chime in. So um, I'm looking at, um, I loved how you, like coming back to that science, like that you talked about genetic memory, you yeah. know, and I, I was like, oh, she mentioned it in there. You know, that made me really happy because yeah. uh, I've been doing research on, uh, you know, just like body trauma and generational trauma and that you know, what was going on with your grandmother, you know, like you were directly and physically and scientifically impacted by because, you know, and it just, just blows my mind. And you know, the, the scientific research on generational trauma is fascinating mm -hmm. and, and it is science. It's not woo woo. It, it's mm -hmm. science. And, and I've seen studies done with generations of mice uh, mm -hmm. of the, of, trauma or experience mm. and that you know third generation fourth generation mouse knows how to do something they shouldn't but it comes down through their i assume their dna yeah there was this one study like to to peggy back on that there was one study uh of where they were studying kind of like the i forgot it was like anxiety or self soothing behaviors of third generation um, Jews. And they took a group who knew that their grandparents had been in the Holocaust and survived. And then they took a group group who did not know. Um, and it gets, it, that sounds, it's more scientifically measured than I'm saying, okay. but they could tell by the, by the personality profile, like how they responded to stress, how they responded to anxiety. They could tell whether that grandchild was part of someone whose grandparent or even great grandparent was uh, went through the Holocaust, whether that child knew it or not. And I thought that was so fascinating um, when we're talking about that genetic, you know, every generation turns genes on, off and off on, and you get that, you know, you know, Jenna, I think that what we know about DNA is th this much <laughs> because I think we have, I think we have magical skills that are encoded in DNA, I think we just don't know enough to know that. You know, I think there's so much encoded that we have absolutely no idea about. And who knows how long science will take to find those things. I mean, because if DNA can say, you know, your hair is going to be this color, my hair is going to be this color, or I'm going to have a large bones and this person's going to have, I mean, DNA carries so much our, our physical characteristics but we now know it carries, you know, our, our genetic memories mm -hmm. as well. What else is in there? I know yeah. we've, we've gone kind of far afield from ancestral. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> an area that we both have an interest in. Yeah, I, I love it. But you know what? We don't need to have to know any of that because we can use tarot or pendulums or any of the other magical things that get us right to the answer, which is incredible. Yeah. So I have a, I have a, a exercise for you personally. How's that? All right, let's do it. Okay. So we want you to connect with an ancestor, a magical ancestor, mm -hmm. and we want to know what was their form of magic that Ooh. they can help you with. Now, I didn't give you advance notice, but I already drew the cards. Oh, you did? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So your magical ancestor is the King of Cups. Hmm. So 
tell me what you think about him. What do you think about this guy? Mm, um, I think I think he was definitely spiritual and probably had an occupation of doing that um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, what else do I think of him? And by the way, this this approach is in the book. So if you're oh, I hadn't got to that part. Yeah, I'll have to go back to that. Well, it's just in how what what do we know? I mean, we know the King of Cups is the King of he is the Summer King. Mm -hmm. Cups are the Summer Suit. So I mean, does that? I, this is where I go when I'm doing this work. So I, I'm putting you on the spot. I apologize. Oh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So would that matter that he's the summer king? Would that matter that the king of cups is associated with Scorpio? Mm -hmm. Would that matter, do you think? I mean, I'm just throwing that out. Mm. I think it matters to those who um, lean into correspondences a lot. Yeah. Susie Chang. Um, yeah, like Susie Chang. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm seeing a man near water, so okay. maybe a coastal person. I tend to see King of Cups as, um, you know, he doesn't need to follow the necessarily the patriarchal brand of masculinity. He's kind of doing it his own way. Like he's, he could have been a fisherman or it could literally be a fisher king type person. It's me. It's me. Um, so I'm, I like seeing that. And it tells me that that person is, is very different to me because <laughs> I never get any water slides right as well. Okay. Because you, you are a Gemini, which is an air sign. Mm -hmm. And so you would relate to the swords. Yeah, but I'm a queen of wands through and through. Okay. <laughs> She's my card. Okay. My rising's Leo. That's what I go for. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think his King of Cups also, you know, uh, King of Cups is a, the king of the emotions. He's he's a leadership, an outward focus of maybe helping other people with their emotional lives or their hearts. There's a lot of forgiveness in King of Cups. So I see all of that as well. So what if I throw a monkey wrench in here and say, and I, I didn't draw this in advance. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just look for a suit that tells us something about his form of magic. Okay, here you go. Don't We don't care that it's the three. We care that it's swords. Mm -hmm. So the king of cups is a master at some kind of air magic. What do you think? What do you think? How would the king of cups do air magic versus king of pentacles? That's That's really key. What do you, so what do you think? This is kind of fun. I haven't done this before. <laughs> I Well, thank you. I feel honored to be well, the first getting to have fun with you play. Um, you know, it's funny that that card came up because uh, one of the first things that came to me as I was thinking about King of Cups it, that I didn't actually verbalize was weather magic, sailing magic. Yeah. It was kind yeah. of what I got. And then as I'm looking at Three of Swords, you know, I'm seeing like the rain behind but also air, air swords is air. So I was like, oh, maybe there's like a kind of weather magic or a sailing magic. Cause I do know that I have, you know, I had a lot of sailors. Oh, huh. Think about this too, Jenna. The, think about what propels the sails. Wind. The wind, yeah, yeah. So I would say this guy probably was a sailor mm -hmm. who could do uh wind magic he could call up wind when there was none yeah so my grandfather was in the navy okay <laughs> well, they didn't need sails then but okay maybe i mean or uh, he was he did scuba diving so a lot of work in the water and in the air mm -hmm. and i don't know i'm just thinking that's what i know that would possibly fit but if not we could go back further sales or just what's making what's it what's good weather draw a card just draw a minor arcana and look for a century look for a century what's oh your, yeah for a century hey guys that you live are you guys following along with your decks i hope put it in the comments if you're doing it with us 
Okay, let's see here. Interesting. I got four of pentacles. So what if we went to the fourth century? <laughs> that's, that's a long, long time ago. So does the suits matter or are we just looking at the number? We're looking at the number, but because this is free will, you want to look at the suits, pull in the suits as well. Yeah. I, I do not like to be terribly rule bound in doing this work because I follow my intuition. Yeah. So I'm also looking how in the, in the back of the image behind the four pentacles, there are lots of flags on, uh, on towers mm -hmm. see? and they're all blowing very, you Risky. know, flags are very straight, which is something that would not be folk typically right. Traditionally focused for pentacles. So I'm looking at that and I'm going, Hmm, that's interesting. So what do you think? Um, I like those castle looking things back there. Fourth century castles. Well, we know it's not in America. <laughs> we know it's not in South America or North America. Could be in Asia. Could be anywhere in Europe. But do you have a psychic thought about where that is? Um, you know, I was thinking as I was looking at that, probably somewhere around like um Syria, Israel, Palestine, mm -hmm. like that part, like like early sea, you know, seafarers of the yeah. time. Okay. And so I have one last card for you to draw. Okay. Are you good Anyone? with doing this? Oh uh, what what? Are you good with 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 our flying by the seat of the pants? Oh yeah, I'm loving this. This is wonderful. Okay. Because I want people to understand I can give you a basic structure in the book. But if you're drawn to go down the line, go off on another track. Follow your intuition. So we know this guy was probably a sailor. We know his magic had to do with wind or water or both. Mm -hmm. It would have helped a sailor to have been very magical with those elements. So why don't you just draw down till you get to a major arcana. Let's find out about the theme of his life at, at gen, at, as it impacts you. Okay. This as is getting it, deep, girl. <laughs> so okay. if I pulled other cards like ma minor arcana before I got to a major, are we going to look at those as well or no? They're just kind of. It makes you happy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got the hermit. Okay. So what do you think? So a guy on a ship is not very hermity, but if I'm saying what's the theme of his life as it relates to your life? Oh, well, I would see like maybe a life of study. I don't think you'd be a very good navigator in the fourth century if you didn't know the stars. Right. And the star of David is traditionally in the image the of lamp. the lamp. The lamp. Which kind of corresponds to like I'm getting like Israel, like that area. I don't know. So it's kind of corresponding to the Middle East and maybe to Israel. Mm -hmm. and, so, the, and the star in the lamp and learning and maybe there's something around keeping the lamp lit on, you know, education or curiosity or going deeper. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So what I would do, where are you? which I'm not, uh, I, if I wanted to know, teach me how to do this, because why does the, why does the, the King of Cups come up? It, it's, you know, I don't believe in coincidence. Why at this time do you need an ancestor who can do water and air magic? Well, and, the hurricane's coming. <laughs> well, but you know, okay, well, okay. Let's take that as an example. Can you use, King of Cups magic to whoosh, out to Ooh. sea. Can yeah. you do, can you envision that track mm -hmm. making a hard right out to the Atlantic? Mm. You, I mean, I'm seeing myself going physically on a map doing this. I don't know what your guy did, mm -hmm. but 
he hmm. showed up for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's helping you with your magic. Should we pull another card on that? I would love you to pull another card. But what's our question? What is the purpose? What is he serving for me right now? Why Why did he show up, right? Great, great question. <laughs> the fool. Well, you know what? I, I have very strong feelings about him. What do you feel about him? About the fool? Yeah. Oh, um, new beginnings, new starts, kind of starting something that I don't have a lot of experience in, but also maybe the lesson around letting go of control so much. Or taking a chance. Yes. So I wonder how it would be if you started pulling out whatever you're, whatever you're drawn to, pulling out a map of that hurricane track and moving it off so it doesn't come anywhere near you in North Carolina, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or blowing it, blowing it out that, you know, it dissipates. Mm -hmm. Envisioning it turning to rain instead of wind. Mm -hmm. I just, I think you're being very drawn to jumping off the cliff and trying something you've never done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Jonathan was saying in the chat, taking a leap of faith. Thank you, Jonathan. It is. And, you know, uh, Jonathan, too, the fool is, is known as the divine fool because he has absolute trust that mm -hmm. the net or, or the divine hand will be there to catch him. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of messages I've been getting this year around surrender. Just surrendering, just letting go, let go and let the universe show up, which is hard to do when you're always like hyper focused, you know? Well, and you're an air sign, you're ruled by Mercury, the same as I am, and you, you're you consumed with ideas and, and you want to focus and create. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so. Uh, I know we have like two minutes, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just blatantly take over and say, Jenny, <laughs> tell us about your new book. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Well, first I want to just give a final hit to Ancestral Grimoire. It's Thank wonderful. You. Pick it up if you want to do um, ancestor work and also you know, if you only do tarot, and that's a lot of people that listen, this is such a wonderful way to get yourself acquainted with a lot of other systems right. and weave them together. So pick right. this up. And then while you're at Amazon, put fill in in your, your, your cart. You definitely want to pick up this book called Will You Give Me a Reading by me. By you. Um, you won't get this though. <laughs> that, that will be there. But uh, yeah, so exciting so news. Congratulations for both of us because yeah. we know that writing a book is a labor of love and you really, I do, I really want people to understand what I'm trying to say. I want you to understand your ancestral magical connections and I want you to understand your own magic and Grimoire will definitely help you do that. Thank you, Nancy. Isn't it true? We're not here to make a billion dollars. We do this because we are being called by the muses to bring this into the world in some way. And um, thank you for your contributions. Um, you, thank you. have, you've done so much with ancestor work and all of these things. It's such been, it's been such a huge contribution. And do you have time to head over to Instagram from 3.30 to 4? I am just gonna walk across the room where my phone is standing and um, I'll meet you there. Do you have two, you have two different spots for your- I do have two different <laughs> spots. That's great. <laughs> I should do like a, a, like, this is what this looks like behind the scenes. It ain't pretty. <laughs> Lots of wires everywhere. So I'm going to leave this studio and I will meet you on Instagram. All right. Thank you so much. You. And see you on Instagram. And okay. for those of you on YouTube, pick up the books. They're wonderful. Thank and you. follow along with what we've done today. And Thanks. I will see you guys. So bye, Nancy. You can go. I will finish up here. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of really great things happening in October that I just want you to know about. Where's my, oh, where's my calendar? So, uh, next 
Wednesday, I think that's October 5th, I'm going to be um, playing around with, of course I don't have it here as well, um, some new wonderful fun decks. And also I'm gonna be talking about festival work as a tarot reader. It is that time of year. There's gonna be a lot of festivaling, a lot of partying, um, and you may want to take a, take advantage of that. So I'm gonna do a wonderful, very general spread that I recommend for those occasions when you have a line of people saying, I don't know. I don't know what to ask. <laughs> Just give me a reading, right? Like, you know, I was like, I don't know where to start. So we're going to do that uh, on the 5th. Um, and then um, uh, it, there's just a bunch of stuff. I don't have my, I this is the problem. I cleaned up. <laughs> now I don't know where anything is, but at least that's next week. Um, I'm also um, teaching a course called Spectral Reader, which is mediumship and tarot for tarot readers to get stronger in their mediumship. That is at the uh, October 26th. You can go to my website, www.jennamatlin.com. And otherwise, I will see you here next week where we will talk about festival work as a tarot reader, and we're going to do a general spread together. So thank you for joining and um, have a great rest of your week. Bye.